Has the mystery of dreaming finally been solved? Find out on The Edge. fourth and last story for today concerns new revelations about why we dream. If you've read my young adult novels, you know any story about dreams is going to catch my attention. Has the mystery finally been solved? According to an intriguing article in Time Magazine's online edition entitled, Why Do We Dream? Neuroscientists David Eagleman and Don Vaughn think so. The story starts off, oddly enough, by talking about echolocation, the ability to see using sound. Basically, human brains rewire themselves in blind people who are denied visual stimuli. This rewiring, known as brain plasticity, ultimately enhances other abilities such as echolocation. You know, the authors could have saved a lot of time here by simply saying daredevil. We all get daredevil. In either sense, in a series of blindful experiments, it turns out that the rewiring happens in temporarily blind people as well. And it happens almost immediately, within an hour. Now, what does all this have to do with dreams? The authors argue that dreams evolved to protect our brains from rewiring. The brain evolved to throw all these random fake images at us while we sleep in order to protect us from said rewiring. They call this defense activation theory. And the authors of this Time article conclude, since the dawn of communication, dreams have perplexed philosophers, priests, and poets. What do dreams mean? Do they portend the future, or do they serve a more practical, functional purpose? We suggest that dream sleep exists, at least in part, to prevent the other senses from taking over the brain's visual cortex when it goes unused. Dreams are the counterbalance against too much flexibility. Thus, although dreams have long been the subject of song and story, they may be better understood as the strange love child of brain plasticity and the rotation of the planet. Wow, nothing like a good mechanistic explanation to destroy my young adult novels. But it doesn't begin to explain the array of oddities associated with dreaming, not the least of which is precognition, as revealed by Eric Wargo in his strangely compelling book, Time Loops, Precognition, Retrocausation, and the Unconscious. This book poses some intriguing thoughts. Specifically, what if people who have a precognitive experience in their dreams aren't seeing the future? Rather, they're remembering it. Reading this book reminded me of a recurring dream I had as a kid. Whatever the dream, it would always end with my alarm going off, which would jolt me into consciousness. But the dream always naturally led to that alarm as its natural conclusion. Again, the alarm didn't interrupt my dream. Rather, the alarm was always the obvious end to it. Say, for example, I'm dreaming about walking down the street in a dream that feels like it lasts for hours. Then suddenly a car swerves off the road and is about to hit me when it honks its horn, sounding exactly like my alarm, which then wakes me up. If Wargo is correct, signals from the future travel backwards in time through quantum trickery and are picked up by my unconscious mind, which then constructs a dream to make sense of that annoying sound that it knows is coming. Yeah, I like that much better than brain plasticity. If you've been craving an extremely strange, mind-bending book, check out Eric Wargo's work. Hey, that's our show for today. If you learned something new or I made you laugh, please hit like and subscribe, as it tells the YouTube algorithms to recommend this video, which allows me to continue doing more stuff. Similarly, comment down below with your thoughts. Just be sure to keep it civil and keep it edgy. This is your host, Jay Jordan Hawk. See you next time on The Edge. And if you enjoy my content, then check out my edgy, award-winning young adult fiction, Puka Wiss the Outcast, A Scout is Brave, and Unwanchagi the Dreamer.